In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of all saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are continuing with the New Era, Part 1, Volume 28, February 22nd, 1930, and we are in the second paragraph. Uh, Jesus says, and united to my sacrifice, cru being crucified, uh, dying on the cross, I ask for the sacrifice of your life, Louisa. So we're seeing that what God asked of Louisa is, is um, something that uh, all the saints were asked for, but in a different way. Uh, this sacrifice is not just to for prayer, fasting, penance, and conversion, but truly sacrificing our life. So at, at the age of 17, uh, Jesus said to Louisa, go to bed and stay there. Now here is a woman who could walk, a, a young teenager who could walk, yet she was obedient. She went to her bed and, and was there for the rest of her life. What, what the Lord then said to her was, no more eating, and she stopped eating. The bishop said, hey, you have to eat. So every day she would obey Jesus by not eating and obey the bishop by eating. And she would eat a cracker and a, maybe a couple of grapes every day. She'd eat them, chew them, swallow them. And um, they would come right up after that, whole and glistening. And Father Bucci gave her food when he was younger. And Louisa... Um, he, he watched Louisa eat this cracker, eat this grape, and watch it come up. And it, he said he was astonished. It came out of her mouth like nothing had happened. And she would put it back on the plate. So she obeyed the bishop, but she obeyed Jesus. And, and so the sacrifice of her life uh, was then no more sleeping, no more water. Louisa did not eat, drink, or sleep for 64 years. And then Jesus says, the reason for this sacrifice of your life is to make the kingdom of the divine will rise again in the midst of the human generations. So while Louisa was alive, the kingdom was, was rising in the midst of the people of Corrado. What's so interesting is Jesus is asking us, little by little, to live in the divine will. So in the midst of your family, the kingdom is rising again in the midst of your family. In the midst of your neighbors, the kingdom is rising again because of you reading, uh, studying, and putting this into practice. The kingdom of God is rising in the midst of the parishioners as you are reading and studying uh, this great gift of the divine will. God is working. So he says, and from each tabernacle, I am as though on the lookout to accomplish the work of redemption and the fiat voluntas to on earth as it is in heaven. So Jesus is saying that every tabernacle, Jesus is waiting for the completion of the work of creation, redemption, and sanctification. He says, and I am content with sacrificing myself and dying in each host in the tabernacle in order to make the son of my divine fiat, the new era that's coming and its full triumph rise again in the midst of the human generations. See, it's happening. See, creation was a, a divine decree. Redemption was a divine decree. And now sanctification is a divine decree. A new beginning is happening for all of mankind. And we are experiencing this as we read, as we study, as we put into practice these truths of the divine will. Why do you think everything's happening in the world? This turmoil in the church and in the world, it's because the kingdom is coming. God is getting ready. The new heavens and the new earth, it's coming soon. And it's here in certain areas where the book of heaven is being read. 
We are sacrificing our life, our human wishes, to enter into the divine wishes, the divine life. And, and little by little, this is happening. No one lives the fullness of this yet. Louisa lived it. Um, uh, Jesus and Mary lived it. That's the, it's, Louisa possessed the true life of Jesus and the true life of Mary. And now what's happening is a new beginning is coming for all the world. The, the hundred years of the evil one that Pope Leo XIII heard in 1884 is over. The kingdom is coming and he knows it's over and he knows the kingdom is coming and he's very angry. His, his kingdom is now coming to a complete end and he knows it. So what is he doing? He's trying as much as he possibly can to make people worried, fearful, anxious, complaining, negative. And that's not what we're supposed to be doing. Jesus taught Louisa the final devotion. He taught St. Saint, Saint Faustina, the final devotion I give to my church is divine mercy. Jesus, I trust in you. Great things are right around the corner. He says, he says, I'm waiting in each host, he says, for the son of my divine will to shine, the new era to be given, the fulfillment of the triumph of the, of the Immaculate Heart of Mary to rise. And, and be glorious. What is the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary? We become like her son, image and likeness. A new era is very close and it's here for those who want it. So Jesus says, upon departing from the earth, I said, I now go to heaven, but I remain on earth in the Eucharistic sacrament, in the Holy Eucharist. I'm in every tabernacle. That's why Pope St. John Paul II said, I want Eucharistic adoration in every parish. He wants this. Why? He's waiting for us. He's waiting for us to give us this son, S-U-N of the divine will, the new era, its full triumph to occur in our souls, to begin there. That's what God is waiting for. He says, I, I will contend myself with waiting for centuries. And I know it'll, it will cost me, God, much. Unheard of outrages that are given to the Holy Eucharist. Unheard of outrages given to the Holy Eucharist. And he says, and they will not be lacking maybe more than my very passion. So Jesus is saying he's going to go through misery of the humanity, hating him in the Eucharist, despising him. In the Eucharist, people uh, uh, who don't want our God make sure that everything that they are, they see in the Catholic Church can be destroyed. They don't want it. He says, and maybe even more than than what I went through in my passion. He says, but I, God, will arm myself with divine patience, and from the little host in the in the tabernacle. I will accomplish and complete this work of the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. So this is what Jesus says from the tabernacle, that the little children of the holy divine will are being with Jesus every day, especially Eucharistic adoration. When we look at Jesus in the monstrance, we fall in love with Jesus in the monstrance. We want to spend time with our Eucharistic Lord, our prisoner of love. Read, read the beginning of volume 25. Listen to Louisa talk about the love. Read the beginning of volume 11, where, where, where Louisa says to Jesus, you know, good night to you in the tabernacle and good morning to you in the tabernacle. These, these prayers change our life. We, we begin to understand what our God is doing. He says, I will make my divine will reign in the hearts of mankind. Our hearts are going to change. Our cold, stony, lifeless hearts are going to change. He says, and will continue to remain in the midst of my children to enjoy the fruits of so many sacrifices that I, Jesus, have been through. So he, he's saying what he went through, he's happy 
he went through the crucifixion. He's happy. All the sacrifices he made. Why? So that we can begin to live this abundant life. This is what God, our God is waiting for. He's waiting for us to enter into this life of peace, joy, and happiness. No more worry. No more fear. No more anxiety. No more complaints. No more negativity. No more sin. Why? Because Jesus has given us the final devotion. Jesus, I trust in you. Why? So that we can now enter into the kingdom of God, re-enter into the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. This is a glorious time to be alive. Our Lord has predestined us to live at this time. What a glorious time our God has given to us. What an amazing time our God has given to us. And all that he's asking is that we give our fiat. That's all he's asking. Would you be willing to give up your misery and trust in him? Would you be get willing to give up your fear and trust in him? Were you willing to give up your doubts and trust in him? That's what our Lord is asking. He, he wants to fill us, fill us with peace, joy, and happiness. He wants us to be filled with the kingdom of God on earth exactly the way the saints have it in heaven. Again, when the kingdom of God comes on earth as it is in heaven, the devil's been banished from heaven. When heaven comes to earth, he will ban be banished from earth. This is what's coming. This is why Our Lady said to Bruno in 1947 at the approved apparition, Our Lady of Revelation in Rome. She says what? She says, time is now come to an end. This era of misery is come to an end. Now God is saying, get ready to live this abundant life of Jesus, this abundant life of Mary that was given to little Louisa. This is where we are today. This is a glorious time to be alive, a glorious time to be alive. And our Lord has allowed us to live at this point. So this is what he says. He says, um, therefore, together with me, he says, uh, one with Jesus. He says, be united in the sacrifice for a cause so holy. The sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, the sacrifice of Mary at Calvary. He says to Louisa, this is what I'm calling you to. Jesus crucified Louisa every day. Why? Together with me and my mother, united in the sacrifice of Calvary for a cause so holy and for the just triumph that my most holy divine will may reign and dominate on earth as it is in heaven. This is where we are today. And so Jesus is saying to us, he's saying, are you willing to be united to the sacrifice? What is the sacrifice for us? It's no more worry, no more fear, no more anxiety, no more complaints, no more negativity because of what Jesus, Mary, and Louisa has gone through. For us, what Jesus is asking of us is to be peaceful, joyful, and happy. What does this mean? The consequence of our sacrifice the consequence of our victimhood in the divine will is to begin to live a life of peace, joy, and happiness. That's what our God is asking. He's really asking us to begin to live this abundant life. How glorious is this? How magnificent is this? Our Lord loves us so much that he predestined us to give us the gift of gifts the, the prodigy of prodigies. He did not give this to the saints. The saints learned how to do the will of God. What Jesus is asking of us is how to live in the will of God. This is a glorious time to be alive. There's no fear. There's no anxiety. There's no complaints. There's no negativity. There's no sin. We want to be one with Jesus Christ. We want to prove to Jesus that we want this. Yes, we still go to confession each week. But there will come a time as the kingdom comes on earth as it is in heaven, 
this this glorious day that's very close when this happens watch our lives change and blossom possessing this life that adam had before the fall for us it's the true life of jesus the true life of mary the new adam and the new eve our god wants us to begin to live this abundant life how glorious is this how magnificent is this so we'll end with a prayer may the blood that flowed upon the wood of this cross free us from our human will that we live in god's holy divine will always we ask this in jesus's name under the mantle of mary through the intercession of louisa that we all the little children of the holy divine will become divinely healed and we pray that this prayer becomes god's command in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen god bless you we'll talk to you later